Thursday to everybody. Um, just on the injury injury front, um, I've ruled uh, Levi Jones out for this game um, with the hip. Um, Austin Appleby uh, with a neck, and um, you, you know Elijah Griffin is right on the cusp with a shoulder uh, that's really sore, and uh, he's extremely questionable and, and doubtful. Um, to be honest with you, so. With that, uh, I'll answer any questions that you got. Marvell good? Marvell is good. He's had a great week of practice. Him and Cam both. Him and Cam both. I thought the, the week off uh, helped uh, helped Marvell. The two weeks have really helped uh, Cam. I thought they were flying around. I actually showed reps of them to the team, uh, how much uh, they were leading uh, this week. So it was good to see. Clay, Michael Pittman's exploded you know, these past mm -hmm. three weeks. Yeah. Two different quarterbacks. Yeah. <laughs> Just kind of what's led to his success? Um, I, I think it's been building. It, it really has. I, I love, you know, going into your third year, um, he's taking the right approach. You know, his first year, he was a role player, um, special teams player, really came on the scene in his second year. I, I wish I, I, it might have even happened earlier. If you remember, recall, he had an ankle injury in his second year that kind of those first six games were really tough um, and then came on the scene the second half. And then it's just continued to work. And, uh, you know, it, and it doesn't matter if it's offense. It doesn't matter if it's uh, special teams. Um, he, he's a difference maker player. And that's what that position has always been for us, is, is uh, guys that, that can make huge plays in games. Uh, every All nine years I've been here, whether it was Robert Woods, Marquise Lee, Nelson Aguilar, Juju Smith, Deontay Burnett, Stephen Mitchell, they just had big play capability guys. And, you know, now you look up and you have you have those guys like Michael Pittman and Tyler Vaughns and Bayless Jones and Amon Ross St. Brown and others. So it's great to see Pitt doing what he's doing. Why is he, why do you think he's so good at catching those jump balls? He works at it. I remember, if, if you recall, um, we had a couple of cash tech. Was it the Arizona game? I thought it, we had a couple that just fell short. And, um, uh, he, you know, he... He, he body catched a couple of them. And he came right back that next week and said, he went into one on ones. He said, Coach, I, I really want to work the high balls. Do you mind if I just get fade after fade after fade after fade? And he did. And just kept working it and kept on getting getting better and better at it. And it's really paying off in games. I actually showed the team one day him doing the one on one drills where he was working it that day. And then you go watch the Colorado game. He's in the exact same scenario with the defender in the exact same place, having to make a, make a high ball catch, strong high ball catch with his hands. And he's just, he's a kid that tries to be a master of his craft. And he plays the game every day. He only knows one speed. He plays at one speed. And he's doing a phenomenal job. He's, he's becoming a pro. Does that help the quarterback too? Yeah, no question. I, I think when, you know, you look at our, our size on the outside right now, and, and, and even with the future coming too, I mean, you look at a Tyler Vaughns who's 6'2 plus, you look at a Michael Pittman who's 6'4, you, you look at a Devin Williams who's a 6'5 plus kid, you know, you have those big bodies outside that, can, that we hope can win those jump ball situations uh, and have. And, you know, um, Tyler's high ball catch. You know, um, high ball catch I thought was phenomenal at the end of the end of the game last week. Um, he did a tremendous job, but that's the first thing they do in routes on air. You know, ten, ten, T sends them deep, uh, down and back. Uh, so they always work that each and every day. It's routine. This group of seniors, uh, you mentioned yesterday, the not wanting to go with the, the notepad mm -hmm. November, mm -hmm. showing mm -hmm. film of these guys who've been hurt. Mm -hmm. um, you've been with them this mm -hmm. whole time. Mm -hmm. And uh, what, what do you see from them in, in this final month of yeah. their careers? Well, you know, we even said today's November 1st, and, and it kind of separates you, uh, the men from the boys in November. You know, there's no time to be tired. The, the season is a grind, uh, you know, and when you hit game 9, 10, 11, 12, you know, bowl games, it, it, it becomes a grind. And, and I've really appreciated those older kids showing the younger guys, hey, guys, this is how we work. This is how we win in November. Um, and I was so proud of them. You know, they, they, they came to me and said, Coach, I know this is our, our routine. It's been our routine for a long time. But you know what? I, we'd really like to have a sense of urgency and put the pads on and keep on, keep on grinding. Um, and uh, so we did. I've always listened to my team and what they need. I think each team is different. Um, and just watch their Tuesday practice, which was a very physical practice, very competitive practice. Hopefully that pays off this Saturday. Uh, you know, um, but I appreciate them. That's how they've always been here um, from, 
from their freshman year all the way through. It's a reason to, that uh, you're so emotional about them um, and, and wanting them to succeed. Is it a tough balance given the, the depth hits you've had with injuries already mm-hmm. to, to then to add more pad practices than you've traditionally uh, done? Um, yeah, you, you know, each team, you know, we've, we've got a little bit more depth on this team, but it's youth, you know, than uh, I've been years here that <laughs> I mean, it felt like we, had, we could have just carried 50 kids to a game not ra- rather than 70, you know. Um, yeah, but, you know, we have the depth. It's just it's youthful depth. You know, it was, it was a, a Talanoa who, who's a talented kid, an EA who's a talented kid, an Elijah Griffin who's a, who's a talented kid that would walk out the Amaral St. Brown. Um, so there's more. There's, there feels more depth than there has been in years past. It's just young, and it's and, and it's good for them. It, it gives them a chance to develop. I watched, uh, uh, like I said the other day, I watched Biggie go against uh, Michael Pittman, and it's. I mean, it's a war. It was a war all day. I mean, all day. It reminded me of Juju and, and Adori going after each other. It was every rep they wanted each other, and they were getting better. And then all of a sudden I look up. I don't say a word. I look up, and there's Devin and Elijah Griffin right behind them. And, and you could just see by their energy and their juice and what they were doing, their competitive level, it just fed to the younger kids. And so that's what you want. You want older brothers to show the way, and they did a great job. What did you see Oregon State unlock during that comeback against Colorado? Uh, they unlocked a quarterback, uh, that's for sure. I thought Jake played really well in the second half. Get, got an opportunity to get back in there, looked healthy, and uh, really did a nice job of just the intermediate passing game, getting the ball out quick. Um, you know, they're a multi-progression team. Um, and he diagnosed coverage. He got the ball to the right spots, and his kids were making plays. Uh, they didn't give up. I was really impressed by them not giving up on the running game. They continu- continued to stay balanced, and they just kept on adding touchdowns. And by the time you looked up, and you know it was three minutes to go in the game, they're making a, they're making that drive at the end, and they're one score down. You know, and then what was impressive? You know, all of a sudden you have that emotion, and it's 34-34, and the extra point doesn't happen. You're going to overtime, and you still find a way to win. That's that's impressive. It's a great job by Coach Smith and his bunch getting a big win in, in Boulder. Last week you talked about it being kind of a simple Simon game plan with Jack. Um, mm-hmm. You ended up putting up quite a bit of points um, mm-hmm. in that game. Are there things you, you take from that game kind of looking forward? Yeah, you know, when you get into when you get into uh, November, um, obviously, you know, as a play caller, it's always a little bit different. But we're in, we have a system, and now you just can't revamp a system in one week. You know, you do the things that you think your kids can operate and function with. It may have a wrinkle or two, but um, there, there were things that we did good in that game last week that we want to be able to build off of. And, um, um, you, you know, so uh, not to give game plan things away, but we're not trying to reinvent, in, reinvent the wheel right now. You know, we're trying to do the things our kids are good at, especially for our young kids. What do you want more? Uh, ahead, talking about the uh, special t- uh, the punt thing, you mm-hmm. ended up with uh, you know, the guy 92 yards, mm-hmm. and you got three 300-pound guys mm-hmm. trying to play play safety on it. Is there any, you know, do you look at that and say, is there a better way to go in terms of the three protectors in case? Well, from a a punt protection standpoint, we've been very good with it uh, over a number of years, and we've had great coverage. I think it's the first return that I've ever seen punt return again with backs at the helm, and the coverage was absolutely perfect. I mean, guys were in position, we just didn't make the play. Uh, You know, a a really good player fielded a, fielded a ball uh, inside the 10 that I thought got us relaxed just for a second and then got outside got, got outside the containment, uh, which hasn't happened for us. But it's been a really good protection. I, I would yeah. say, Dan, about 90% of college football uses that protection because, you know, it's, 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 it's terrific for not getting pump blocks and you still can be able to uh, do ball placement. Um, uh, the punter feels secure in being able to directional punt with it. So it's been good for us. And they got one on us, which is very unfortunate, but I, I'm confident in, in what we're doing. Right. Hey, there was one more over here if it needed to. Uh, uh, yeah, now I forgot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Awesome. Have a great Thursday. Night, guys. Thanks, guys. Yeah.